Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Parmesh. I run the Godrej India Culture Lab, which is an extraordinary space that we're trying to build here out of Ikroli, where we are putting together different people and ideas and an ongoing effort to understand what it means to be Indian and modern. All our events are fun and exciting and spectacular, so I urge you to go to our website, um, see them, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, etc. But some of them happen to be more special than others because they're with people we see and live with every day and people we love. So today is one of those very special events. Um, we like to think of what we do at the Culture Lab as cross-pollination. And I can't think of a greater example of cross-pollination than Nader Godridge, or NBG as we like to call him here fondly at Godridge. Um, he's cross-pollinated all his life. Um, Harvard, MIT, Stanford, business, chemicals, agriculture, animal feed, the environment, all these languages, whether it's French or English or Parsi, it's God knows how many others, chess, bridge, um, Scrabble. NBG humbly likes to call himself jack of all trades, master of none, but uh, you know, on the other hand, we think of him as a master of all of them because, what's all, because his interests, they influence each other quite beautifully and more, I think more importantly, the value that he gains from one field kind, and his experiences kind of add to the others quite exponentially. And so whether it's in holding all these pa patents in the fields of things like agricultural chemicals or surfactants, it's fun working at Gordon because you get to learn. I just learned what a surfactant is. It's very sexy. Um, or whether it's in serving as MD of Godrej Industries or of <laughs> chairman of um, you know, Godrej Agrovet and, or as a director on all these firms like Godrej and Boyce, GCPL, Indian Hotels, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. And I know all of you are here today. Where's Bharat? Hi, Bharat. Yeah, great. <laughs> I see. Um, and, or whether in actually developing several industries themselves, whether it's animal feed um, and so on. And in the middle of all this, he has time to serve as the president of Alliance Francais uh, Mumbai. So we gathered here for the release of his second book called very simply Nader Godrej the Poet. His first called Life and Other Poems was released in 1992. And this one is special because it consists of 20 poems that are actually speeches that he's given at different occasions over the years at conferences all over the world. And they've been accompanied by some beautiful illustrations by artist Rahul Das as well. So NBG, without further ado, can you come up on stage to your desk to begin this evening? They're going to do like this mixture of like Pani with Parmesh and him reading and performing. Coffee with Karan is so last season. <laughs> so you can see we've given him Pani, right? So, because you know it's good and green and in, in future water will be yes, really the pani most... Pani with Parmesh. Pani with Parmesh. The most, the most, most, most scarce resources. <laughs> we have wine later for those who have like middle class taste, but this is actually... <laughs> <laughs> um, so NBJ, before we start reading from your book, Tell me about how you began writing poetry. I believe your mother and grandmother had something to do with it. Yes, uh, my grandmother was a poet, and she loved reciting poetry. And from a very early age, I had the pleasure of hearing her recite poetry. She also used to write for the Indian independence movement, and she published many of those poems in magazines supporting the Indian independence movement. My mother also wrote occasional poetry, cards, uh, Whenever she gave a gift, there was always a short poem in that. So I got in the habit of writing a little bit. And then in the 80s, I found that if I found something difficult to say, I could put it into verse and hand it over instead of confronting someone. And <laughs> I got into the habit. And then uh, Bharat is here, so he will recall we had the Harvard Business School Economic Times Award, and, and one of those, I was asked to give a vote of thanks. And it always puzzled me what the purpose of a vote of thanks was, so I decided to write it as a poem. And since this was in Calcutta, it was very well received. I'm fortunate that my first poem was not in Bombay, so the cultured people there rather enjoyed it. And then I said, maybe I should do this more often. So we'll keep that in mind. We won't have a vote of thanks here today. <laughs> that was a hint, hint. But NBG, now you've become, because of these experiences, you've kind of become the poet laureate of our Indian business world. Does it bother you every time someone invites you somewhere saying, and just produce, a, like I, when we asked you to do this, 
I didn't put any pressure, but I said you have to write the you have to write the invite in verse, and it has to be like this, and it has to be exactly <laughs> this, and you have until tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> does it does it irritate you sometimes? It is a little bit of pressure, and I always get nervous when I get a new assignment because it keeps me away from work and it keeps me away from my family. But and uh, the thought of having to write a poem is always creates anxiety. But actually delivering the poem and watching the audience reaction is pure pleasure. I, I really enjoy the performance more than the writing. <laughs> <laughs> it's for a lot of things in life. NBG, what poets have influenced you? Who do you, uh, who do you read regularly? And yes, a back? lot of poets in different languages. Uh, Byron, for example, or Pushkin, or Baudelaire, or Verlaine. And uh, three poets that I interacted with were uh, Vikram Seth, Tim Steele, and Nisim Ezekiel. I believe um, in your first book, Actually, I've read it. It's, it's quite wonderful. I've especially read this poem. You have a poem um, on Seth or influenced by Seth and, and, and how Seth was influenced by Pushkin. So if I could ask you to, to read that for us. I'll just read the first stanza, yes. but it shows about how Vikram Seth saw two different translations of uh, Nabokov's Yevgeny Anyegin, and one was much more appealing than the other. And that was written just like Pushkin's uh, poem in uh, Pushkin, in the form of a Pushkin sonnet. So I'll read you the first stanza. For the rest, you'll have to look at the book. <laughs> Had I not written one short letter in which I mentioned Vikram Seth, perhaps it would have been much better for those of you with little faith in my admittedly poor talent. But some amongst you who are gallant and choose to lend at least one year, in cadence verse, you shall all hear how Russia's scion, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, wrote in verse, tetrameter, supple, terse, now flows, then ebbs, there's nothing grander, about his great protagonist, Eugene Anyegin, Amherst. Thank you. And we have a surprise for you. We couldn't bring Vikram here for you. Um, because, you know, he's taking forever to finish a suitable girl. Me, and, you know, if we brought him here, then he'd take one more year. Um, and for those who are fans, we really want him to finish it quickly. Um, but instead, we brought you um, the next best thing. We brought you his sister, Aradna Seth, who is a famous, um, you know, uh, film uh, set director, set maker, artist, photographer, and documentary filmmaker here as well. So, Aradna, if I can invite you to pop up from the audience and give NBG a hug uh, from Vikram. <laughs> Next time you can bring Vikram with you, but only after he's finished the book. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. And would you tell me about your writing process? How do you, you know, first, where do you write? What time do you write? Do you use a pen, computer? Do you compose poems using SMS? Do you work on a poem for a long time? I mean, just how, how do you do it? In the 80s, it was always on pen and paper. And uh, I could write very well with pen and paper in those days, but I think now my hand wobbles because I have so little practice using pen and paper. So now, uh, then in between it was on the com computer, and recently it's on the iPad. The nice thing about the iPad is I can write on a plane, I can write in a car, I can write wherever I am, and that helps. Uh, usually if it's a commission like a speech, then I start thinking about what I'm going to say, and then I agonize and agonize, and then I write the first line, and after that it flows. Uh, but some of my, occasionally I actually write a poem, which is very rare for me, it's mostly speeches, but those happen in the middle of the night when I suddenly wake up and start jotting down ideas. And then there's Rati say, again, like you disturb our sleep again for a poem. <laughs> Um, do you test your poem on the family first? Do yes, you, yeah. uh, on whoever is around <laughs> at home, and certainly Rati is always there. And uh, she always points out the parts of the poem that don't work. 
Uh, at first, I resist, but with long experience, I've learned that I should not ignore her. And even recently, she made some very good remarks, and I said, I have to deliver it tomorrow, there's no time. But somehow in the car, I managed to make the corrections, and Rati was absolutely right, and they worked beautifully, and I'm glad she pushes me. <laughs> and Rati, we want you to do something as well. So since you are the, the reason for him actually finishing poems and writing them so well, we want you to come up on stage and do the book release. So can we please invite you on stage? This is a double occasion because we not only have NBG's book release, but we're also releasing for the first time his website to the world. So it's nadirgodrich.com. And for that, can I invite Hormaz and Burgess to come up on stage and do the click. We're all high tech. At Godrich, we're even better than Google in terms of how sophisticated we are. So come on up and we'll like release the website. Um, no, you have to click. <laughs> and hopefully it should come up, huh? So. Instagram, tweet this, everything we do here is meant to be shared with the world. And in fact, if you're not taking, I mean, if you have your phones out, I'm assuming you're taking pictures and not messaging each other, but that's also okay. Um, there are some, stay on stage, all of you, because there are, Radhi, come this side. There are some other people who've um, contributed significantly to the making of this book, and I want to invite some of them on stage um, to come up for a picture and to share this moment with us. Um, can we please call Usha up? Usha, where are you? Darshan is in Tokyo, so she sends a big hug. Or can I please call Vandana up? Vandana, come up on stage. Nisa, can I call you up on stage? And finally, Rahul Das. Where are you, Rahul? Rahul's done the incredible artwork to go with this. So Rahul, thank you. We may not have time for selfies, but we can totally do a groupie. So this is a good time if someone wants to do a group picture. Um, you have like five seconds. Okay, now get up. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And now it's time for our poetry reading to begin. If you go to the website, you'll find all of NBG's poems um, arranged across alphabetically, theme-wise and so on, so I really urge you to go on. Um, not here, as I can see, I, I hope whoever's whipped out their phone, you're tweeting, um, but you, know, you can explore the website at length. It's just been launched, it's gonna stay up forever. Um, but for our reading here, while discussing with NBG, we thought we'd give you just a taste of some of these poems by exploring some of the themes. We're gonna read six poems out across a bunch of different themes. Um, since we are at Godridge NBG, um, and you are Nadir Godridge, and half the people here are Godridge, um, and our Godrej campus in Vikroli is really the center of the cultural scene in Bombay and India. Um, we thought you should, <laughs> uh, maybe you could read out two Godrej-linked poems uh, just to start with. Right. The first one is a general one on entrepreneurship, which was read at the Zoroastrian Congress in Dubai in December 2009. Zoroastrians from ancient times ventured forth to east and west, adapted to various climes and brought the world the very best of merchandise and thoughts as well. Their partners could always tell their dealings were upright and fair. This reputation everywhere helped the Parsi merchant shine. They prospered in the China trade where giant fortunes were soon made, but opulence was not the sign the Parsi merchant had arrived. The wealth for which he had strived was used to help one and all for charity was enjoined, and because of it, they stood tall. The nickname Ready Money coined for Sir Kavas G. Jangir 
made it unmistakably clear that Parsi merchants had a stash, but for a cause, they'd hand out cash. The pioneer was Gigi Boy, in trade and then philanthropy. In Bombay, everywhere you see JJ, this or that. We enjoy his munificence to this day. Sir Jamsedji showed the way. The ships on which the merchants sailed were built by Parsi Enterprise. The East India Company availed these skills for its steady rise. The warriors built the biggest ships, ships that took the longest trips. Everywhere their ships were sought, so Bombay became a major port, a place where businessmen could thrive. Now cotton mills became a fad, though Jay and Tata also had a few. He boldly chose to strive for industries that build a nation, even though their creation would stretch the Tatas very thin. And when he died, the sons went on, their troubles were born with a grin, his mantle they would bravely don. And though the group was near death, the brothers fought to their last breath. The group was able to survive and in good time began to thrive. They never took the easy way, but built all the nation needed. And in this aim, they succeeded. The Taj Hotel still holds sway. They pioneered hydropower and steel and gave their workers the fairest deal. The Tatars fought colonial might and strove to make India strong. JRD faced a different plight, socialist policies that went wrong. The airline that he built and prized was callously nationalized. He looked beyond the grief and pain. Without considering personal gain, he flew Air India to a lofty height. Then politicians pushed him out. That moment, without a doubt, marked the airline's downward flight. But JRD's great success was the founding of TCS. <laughs> and greater still was a succession. For Rutten was the perfect heir. His entry was a stormy session, till all the subtrups reigning there, one by one were asked to quit. The group then ran on Rutten's writ. Once again, they could succeed. As the economy was freed, Tata Steel, which had grown fat, was made to be lean and mean. Such chain was quite unforeseen, till Rutten put them on the mat. But TCS was the asset that gave Rutten strength to throw his hat so boldly in the global ring. Some wonder why he ventured there. Could it become a deadly fling? But I don't think that is fair. Although his timing could have been better, we should salute this true go-getter. Not second guess him with hindsight. The group has such a mighty bite that they can chew what they like. His greatest deed was something small. He took the quite outrageous call that he could replace the motorbike with a car that's cheap and safe to boot. The critics thought, what a hoot. A lackey said, a lack it was, the Nano is a solid car. And when asked why, he said, because a promise is a promise. He'll go far, for thinking big is Rutten's way. A challenge always makes his day, especially one with a common touch. His latest feat is known as Swatch, a way to make our water clean at a cost affordable to all. In our esteem, he stands so tall because his group and trusts are seen as working for the common good. The world now wonders whoever could replace him in this mighty task. The Tatars stand very tall, but were there others, one might ask? The Wadias, one would recall. I hope it won't cause some contention if in passing I were to mention my own grand uncle, Ardeshir, who in his time caused quite a stir. The story that I have been told states he befriended Mahatma Gandhi, to whom he said, though freedom's dandy, and sure it's good to be bold, but how can we be truly free without a vibrant economy? Mahatma Gandhi wisely agreed. His friend Ardeshir was quite right, but, and, but turned to him to sow the seed of India's economic might. He was a lawyer, no scientist, but a PhD was never missed. With experiments, he proceeded and learned the theory as he needed. A fireproof safe was invented. With inspiration and much toil, he made his soap from vegetable oil. He made the best, but lamented that foreign goods were preferred. But all the same, he persevered. His brother Pirosha consolidated, and thanks to him, I now stand here. That story has oft been stated, I'll say no more, you needn't fear. I surely couldn't complete this history without mentioning Palan mystery. In construction, he truly tars, 
and silently he lends his powers to the mighty Tata group, in which he holds a major share. And now I think it's only fair that I bring bankers in the loop. Pochkana Wala takes first rank for setting up Central Bank. Though A.D. Shroff built institutions, he deserves a special price for fighting socialist delusions with Forum of Free Enterprise. Then Parsi entrepreneurship slows, the reason why no one knows. The professional path to fame was found, for doctors, lawyers now abound, and scientists are also seen. Large groups we no longer find, replaced perhaps by a different kind. New enterprise comes on the scene, and unlike what had come before, professionals knock on the door. M.N. Dastul comes to mind, the quintessential engineer. In the Argas and Forbes, you will find a similar pattern appear. In biotech, there's Willu Patel, the Serum Institute as well, which the Poonawala sired, but Hafkin scientists were hired. That doesn't quite fit my theme, but Keke Garda fits the bill, a synthesizer of great skill. The media world fits in the scheme, while Ronnie Screwwala produces well, Sam Balsara knows how to sell. <laughs> India wasn't the only place for Zoroastrian enterprise. Iranians were also in the race. The Zartoshi brothers get the prize for Merabun and Faridun proved to be a real boon for Zoroastrian causes everywhere. Earlier, Arba Rustam Ghiv was there and Temtem Arish in recent times. And Lord Billimoria brought much cheer to Indian food with Cobra beer. <laughs> I think I've shown with these rhymes, our entrepreneurs are everywhere. Why there's Behram Avari Hotel in Dubai. The purpose of this lengthy story is to look for future growth and not to bask in ancient glory. There's not much harm if we do both. I urge all the youngsters here to start a business without fear, with passion and a worthy cause. Much courage, but a cautious pause for a reason evaluation. If in your dealings you are fair, your customers are shown great care, your business truly serves the nation, and if you stay true to your creed, you too are destined to succeed. Thank you. <laughs> and Vijay, that was about that was about Parsi entrepreneurship in general. Yes. But um, I want your second point to be about us at Godrich in particular. Okay. <laughs> this one is called the Godrich Future, and hence our future will be bright if we always keep in sight the Godrich Vision 2020. India will be a land of plenty. The economy will quickly grow, and some of this is bound to flow into each and every SBU, even if we do nothing new. But if our strategy is right, we can reach a greater height. And this we call our 10 by 10. Our claim then will be very bold. In 10 years' time, we'll grow tenfold. Now, this can easily be stated, but how is it to be created? We have a mantra that is great. Our mantra simply is create. CP and chemicals are C, and real estate, the RE. While the sun shines, we'll make hay with agriculture, which is our A, and transformation is our T, and emerging businesses are E. Right now, we have retail and food, in time, some more could be pursued. Now, chemicals might grow slow. CP and agrovet will grow at a pace that's in between, but real estate will be seen to grow the fastest of them all. But if we take an average call, 26% can be achieved, which you will all be relieved to know provides tenfold growth. CP and agrovet could both grow consistently at this rate, a CAGR of 40 for real estate, not steady, but high and then declining. And for chemicals, we are defining a slow rate of 15%. And yet the message should be sent that values will be paramount. When in doubt, nothing else should count. Newer values we should gain, but older values must sustain. And let us live with progression, empathy, experience and expression. For shared values, there's good and green. Being green, can really help the nation. And we must start with conservation of energy, water, habitat. But we shouldn't stop at that. I see the strongest synergy in pushing greener energy. There's biomass for agrovet, and in a few years, I would bet that solar costs would quickly drop, 
And if incentives do not stop, properties will find it fit to invest and do its bit. We should all understand there is some synergy in land. And we can benefit the nation while reducing our taxation. There is green and then there's good. And it is clearly understood our best bet here is education. It's good for us and the nation. And sales is where I'm sure we'll start, but other domains could be a part of what it is we'd like to teach and many more we could reach. We should remember as we grow that big is strong but could be slow. We must acquire the ability to act with great agility. If we do all that is expected, if our brand is well respected, if all stakeholders benefit, our strategy will be a hit. Thank you, MVG. This Godrej future that you've described is going to be set against the context of a very new, um, changing India. I want to ask you about your dreams for this new India that you see all around you. I hope that this India will be a freer place where there will be a lot of enterprise and everyone will benefit from it. It's very important that we have freedom to be entrepreneurial, but that it is also inclusive. I also hope that it will be a greener India and this new government has already indicated that they want to promote green energy, which I think is economical and essential to save the planet. And I look for a rich, vibrant, sustainable India. Thank you. Thank you. And now if I may ask you to reach two, uh, you have this French connection. So if I may ask you to reach two uh, poems connected to France and some, I know we have Alain, in fact, a whole team from Alliance France say hi, hi AF team. Um, so if you could read, uh, you know, two poems that are French, right? In nature. The first one was on the day I received the Ordre National de la Légion d'Honneur on 26 November 2008. My mother wrote that when I was just two, my cousine Genoise conversed with me en français and left an impression till this day. Perhaps that is the reason why, in school, I would always try so very hard when it came to French, but Hindi felt like a wrench. <laughs> in 70, by happenstance, GS invited me to France. So I was quickly on a plane, and then I took a rumbling train. The train was slow, no TGV, but soon I was in Saint-Tropez. The beauties there gave me a scare, for most of them were rather bare. <laughs> and very soon I came to know why this small town was called saint Tro. Of course I met a comely wench, who taught me how to speak in French. At school you mostly read and write, so speaking French was a delight. And thus began my link to France, for my role in IFTA and Alliance. Uncle Sorab paved the way. I sorely miss him on this day. His absence is the only cloud. Today I know he would be proud. Like me, he also had the chance to be decorated twice by France. My family is here in full force. For me, they have always been a source of great support, as I recall, and I would like to thank them all. <laughs> MBJ, you told me earlier that um, this poem, in a way, um, saved your life. Do you want to share the incident with everyone? Right. I don't know if anybody noticed, but the date was 26 November 2008, the day of the Mumbai attacks. Uh, when I got my first French award, I had organized the function at the Taj Mahal Hotel. And if this date had not been chosen, I was invited to a function at the Taj Mahal Hotel by uh, Unilever at which two chairmen, past and present, of Unilever were present, as well as several past presidents of Hindustan Unilever. I was also invited to functions at the Oberoi that night, so I might have been at any of these events had not the French decided this date to confer the award because the ambassador was coming down. And there was a French food festival at the Four Seasons, uh, catered to by the Cordon Bleu, and so we decided to have the function of the Four Seasons, and I was there, all my family was there, many of my friends were there. And strangely, just as we were sitting out to dinner, 
for some strange reason, Adi started talking about my other near escapes, the time I crash landed at Madras airport, the time I flew out of Baghdad only to have an explosion in the airport, the time I was with my uncle and aunt in Seychelles at a dinner for the prime minister, and he hurriedly left the dinner, organized a coup, and we had to leave early in the morning on the last plane before the airport closed. <laughs> And we were discussing all of this, and suddenly we heard gunfire. <laughs> and we all hastily left. So I want to thank everyone from France here. Thank you. Thank yes. you for doing it. Eternal <laughs> gratitude to France. <laughs> and Vijay, in that, with that gratitude, could you read out a poem in French? Um, I believe you write a lot in French. I used to. I don't very much now. But this is one of my favorites. I wrote this when my grandmother passed away. And I tried to write this poem in English, but it didn't work. So a line came in French, and it worked. Est-ce que la mort est un néant? Dormir sans le moindre rêve, un cul-de-sac ou un passage chien, où l'âme bien fatiguée achève sa retraite paradisiaque avec tes plaisirs aphrodisiaques et tous les vœux bien connus et même des désirs jamais eus. Les gens qui meurent et vivent encore parlent d'une âme qui sort des reins et monte au-dessus et cherche en vain la mort attirante qu'elle adore. Ont-ils raison ou ont-ils tort Puis-je savoir avant la mort And we're not gonna, we aren't going to do translations of that. Um, you know, you can go to the website and find the translation or buy the book and you'll find the translation. But with some poems, maybe you don't need to understand. You can just feel the feelings. And Viji, on that same note, can you read out another poem, which is one of my favorites from this new book, In Flight Movie? Um, I was very moved while reading it. And if you could share that with everyone. Now, 16 hours without a stop is far too long to fly. Of hundred movies on the list, just one caught my eye. I am not here to be loved, is what I chose to see. The hero was about my age and looked a bit like me. Now bad news is the only thing that bailiffs come to bear. Of course their victims never think of it as being fair. But then how much of others' pain can we really share? And soon the hardened bailiff no longer seemed to care. His daily life was overcome by a sense of gloom. He spent long hours by himself in his despondent room. But through the window, he could see a dancing class in swing. Of all the dancers in the world, the tango's the one to bring back passion to our bailiff's life. So he enrolled. And when the class was over, and away he strolled. He met a lovely lady who asked if he was so-and-so. He said, I am indeed, but how could you ever know? Of course, this was just art, not life, so readers have no qualms. For after all the twists and turns, she did dance in his arms. The twirling stopped, the credits came, but the image wouldn't fade. Her crinkled smile, her flaxen hair, her brows, that deeper shade. I stared and stared and strongly felt a sense of deja vu. It then struck me that she appeared uncannily like you. We can't retrace our early steps when once the line is crossed. But in a flash, we can relive a love we thought was lost. Always brings tears to my eyes. Um, did you write that on a? Did you write that on a plane? Did you start writing that? Did yes, you... uh, I saw that movie and I started writing it right on the plane. And then and you then finished, finished it a little later. later. Thank you. Um, as your last poem, at least in the reading part of this evening, I wonder if you can read out a poem which is not in your book. Um, I believe you've written a poem about the new government. If you could share that with us. <laughs> This was a poem that I recited at an economic conference in America recently, and so. this is the Indian debut. 
While Modi's victory stole the thunder, still all agree the real wonder is India's election, so grand in scale, the latest stage in a tale of epic democracy. The reason why, one day India will rise high. This time the verdict was very clear. Most Indians now are in good cheer. Decisive Modi's now in charge, and hopes are high by and large. Some still have a nagging doubt. And what is all of this about? When one sees a lotus bloom, there is no thought of gloom and doom. The bloom inspires all with hope. The roots are well beyond our scope. Some scholars choose to penetrate. The picture there is not so great. The roots are all mired in mud. But all is hidden by the flood. For the truth, should we still grope, or let us be seduced by hope? Now we finished our election, and surely it's a clear selection. And judging by Sensex behavior, Modi's perceived to be a savior. The Sensex rose before they went, and business thinks he's heaven sent. It's not surprising they think that way. After the last few years of the UPA, then the CAG could clearly see scams in iron or coal 2G. One of their biggest flaws were the retrospective laws. Some revenue might have been gained, but foreign investors were deeply pained. So FDI was pushed away and the rupee was put in play. As the CAD was also mounting, it was 4% and counting. Production bans on resources was one of the major sources. Gold imports were another cause, and here I think we should pause. Should gold be in the current account? Or should we treat this huge amount as being of a capital nature? I don't think I have the stature to suggest a different call. Will someone else pick up the ball? So when the Fed chose to taper, the markets went on a caper. Emerging markets were all shunned. The RBI was shocked and stunned. The lame duck governor limped along. But Raghuram Rajan came on strong. He increased the dollar flow. Restricted gold then came in slow. The battered rupee slowly rose. And now we have good dollar flows. That RBI now actually tries to control the rupee's rise. The cab continues to steadily slow. The latest number was very low. For the UPA, it's far too late. For the NDA, it will be great. Once Modi was beyond the pale, now he seems to smoothly sail. Should we still be on our guard? This call will always be quite hard. It's true that Modi has moved on. His earlier agenda has now gone. Development is where he's at. I sincerely hope he sticks to that. He says that he will work for all. I hope he is indeed that tall. We have no choice, and so we must contribute our cautious trust. It was a new stage for our nation, right from the inauguration. Inviting SARC heads of state was a wonderful way to innovate. All the protests were ignored, and many excellent points were scored, appearing stately and incisive, as well as open and decisive. I think I should also mention that even with good intention, Modi has a difficult task, and optimism is too much to us. Some feel the economy is beyond repair, I don't think that is quite so fair. The critics say there are three hits, inflation and twin deficits. On inflation, I have a view which to this audience isn't new. Things are different in our nation. Wages don't cause much inflation. Commodity prices have the lion's share. And today with trade, it would be fair to say those prices are globally set. And you can safely take a bet that interest rates have less impact and that global prices, in fact, combined with the exchange rate, determine our inflation's fate. The global, the global prices are now benign, the exchange rate is just fine, and therefore it would clearly seem that inflation soon will lose its steam. Once stalled projects come on stream, exports will begin to gleam, the CAD's already very low, and very soon it will just go. As for the budget deficit, it can still be made to fit. Subsidies will have to go, and Modi should be in the know. In infrastructure, we will see a better model PPP. Our government is asset rich, resources, stocks, all of which they can sell. 
or they can milk and things could be as smooth as silk. We surely have sufficient wealth for education as well as health. But others have another fear. Our bureaucrats are hard to steer. The lack of votes in the upper house is for them another grouse. The last time we had a greater score was way back in 84. But that euphoria didn't last and soon those glorious days had passed. But does that mean there is no scope for any kind of real hope? Now Modi is a practice hand. He really does understand what governance is all about and how government should be kept out. The dangers always will be there, but chances are much more than fair. But nor can we just stand by. Every citizen must try to do his bit to contribute, to praise as well as to refute. The roots are muddy, the bloom is bright, rejoice in what's within your sight, beware of all that you can't see, ensure we live both proud and free. If I can open this up to the audience. Good evening, Mr. Godrej. Thank you for having us over and sharing such a vast gamut of various things, like right from the Parsis, be it the other god who may have not been enterprising like Alik Padamsi, or maybe the healthcare aspects of the Tatas. I re recall some time back when I first came here, uh, Parmesh had mentioned that uh, this is not just going to be the new NCPA, but go and far overtake that. And I can see that happening. Maybe even a trend wherein the new balance sheets would have worse and also, also have uh, maybe our political and our parliamentarians talking in verse, which would make it more palatable to us. Thank you, thank you for sharing, and especially the French one. Beautiful, thank you. You've given us an idea for our next annual report. No pressure. I'm prepared to talk on any subject in verse, but I won't take on Sebi. <laughs> yes, so just raise your hand and we'll bring a mic to you over there. Yes. And then, and then, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Sandeep Bajore here. And uh, first of all, I must compliment uh, Godrej Group for naming this place as Culture Lab. We can have Chemical Lab, we can have Innovation Lab. But Culture Lab is the first name we have heard. It's a very fascinating name. And this shows how much importance Godrej Group gives to the development of culture. Uh, secondly, uh, I've known uh, Mr. Nader Godrej since 20 years and part of vegetable oil industry. And every year in our annual event, when we request Mr. Godrej to speak, he speaks in the poetry form only. So our audience love it very much. You, pe most people may be having first time to listen to him in this way, but we are listening last 10 years uh, in a poetic form. We are very lucky, Mr. Godrej. And lastly, I must tell you, with your poem, in so, so simple words, you have really described the tonic for curing the problem of inflation. <laughs> the, uh, the absolutely, the exchange rate and global commodity prices are the only reason of inflation or deflation. Right. And I think the Reserve Bank of India and the government will take this note very seriously. <laughs> they, they, they will buy this book. Thank you. We'll send them a tweet after this. Okay. I think there's a question. Thank you, Sandeep. My friends in the commodity businesses understand this very well. Unfortunately, the people in the Reserve Bank don't understand commodities so well. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mr. Godrej. Friends, I'm Jayant Lapse here, representing the All India Liquid Bulk Importers and Exporters Association. And if our association has grown and created an impact in the corridors of Ministry of Finance, it is thanks to Mr. Nadi Godrej's poems. It's been over a decade, more than 12 years that are at our anniversary celebrations at uh, the Odal Trident. Mr. Nadir Godrej, uh, of course, he is the chairman and uh, the chief guest emeritus for our events. And every year after year, he comes out with brilliant poems on taxation. So much so that today all the commissioners, chief commissioners, even the members of the board, Department of Revenue are eagerly awaiting for the Albia event thanks to Mr. Nadir Godrej. <laughs> and one small incident which I will never forget and I will be always indebted to Mrs. Rati and Nadir is during one of the events, Mr. Godrej was in hospital, he was under traction. And we had this event and there was no way we could go ahead without Mr. Nadir Godrej's presence because I had made a commitment 
to the member customs and chief commissioners that mr nadir goodrich is going to be there and when it, when i told him that his absence would cause embarrassment to us he took permission from the hospital and uh, mrs rathi ensured that he came for the occasion narrated the poem and went back now that is what is the greatness about uh, mr goodrich thank you sir we are grateful it helps it helps being married to a doctor no it helps being married to a doctor <laughs> you can get yes. permission very easily it's usually useful <laughs> and uh, as they say death and taxes are inevitable but we'll do everything to reduce our taxes <laughs> yes yes so nadir referred to the howard business school association and the economic times award and i must tell that whatever be the lecture whatever be the event and even if it is just vote of thanks for nadir when everybody is going out they only talk about his poem <laughs> so there is this story and nadir you will have to help me to find out whether it is true or whether it is made up but story of alexander pope that as a child he would say and talk in verses so any time guests came home friends came home once he started talking in verses all the attention would be on him so one day his father told him that today evening i have a very important friend coming i want to spend time with him if once you say something in verse everybody will talk about you you will be asked to say more so just be careful otherwise i'll beat you now that was a big threat so immediately the child replied father father mercy take verses i shall never make <laughs> nadir it was a wonderful evening my name is jira i am nadir's friend you did uh, share with us uh, the first trick that is once you write the first line the poem flows could you share as to when do you end the poem <laughs> how do you know that well this is it yes uh, uh it's that's that's an interesting question uh i used to write occasionally in prose in the good old days but even then if i were to write an essay i use i rarely needed to write an outline i always had in my head what i was going to say and usually th their logical thoughts with a conclusion and so when you arrive at the conclusion then the poem ends at most you have to thank everybody before the final end <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah more can we take the mic back yeah i am bipin alreja and i have been a friend of nadir since we were 7 or 8 years old there are numerous instances anecdotes that i could talk about but what i'd like to speak about is uh, his humility his extreme self effacing nature and uh, you know what what he has shown us today to this august group is really fascinating thinking about is there any parallel for this well i don't know a parallel in poetry but i do know a sort of parallel in prose i can think of only nani palkhiwala who used to decode demystify the budget and thrill lakhs of people on the lawns of uh, brebon stadium and other venues and this is a suggestion for this culture club and for anyone else who can i think nadir's genius and prowess in poetry should be made available more actively to the masses not only for the knowledge that it will spread but also for the talent for people to appreciate heartiest congratulations thank you thank you bipin that's a lovely cue for me to tell you and everyone else because you know this is a great <laughs> this will come up on youtube and of course you have to then talk about it on facebook twitter a lot of our outreach of everything we do here at godridge is online um but and we can chat later over snacks about other ways that we can popularize it but everything we do is kind of put up out there for the world everything is free everything is a resource and what we're trying to do with all of our events whether literary or otherwise is really create an online repository 
of these talks for the world um, to, to learn from. So, so thank you. It's already there. And let's think of other ways as well. Thank you so much for being an incredible audience. And NBG, thank you for sharing these with us. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>